The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 144. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the EL. Today we have Mickey Agrawal, author of Do Cool SH Star T. Quit your job, start your own business, and live happily ever after. And the great thing, this book came out a couple years ago, actually uh, about a year and a half ago, but the paperback, which is a little bit cheaper, uh, will be out. Uh, actually, by the time this airs, it should actually be out. So without further ado, let's bring on Mickey. Welcome, Mickey, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Thank you. We take just a moment before we take a deep dive into your book and take some time to introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about you personally. Sure. So I guess people call me a serial social entrepreneur. Um, I started off working in investment banking when I graduated from Cornell University. And 9-11 happened um, like a few days before, uh, a few days after I moved to New York. And um, I was actually supposed to be at Two World Trade Center on that day. Um, And it was the first time in my life that I slept through my alarm clock and missed the whole thing. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Two people in my office died. Um, and it was sort of my wake-up call, my aha. I kind of tried my head at different things. I played professional soccer for a couple of years. Um, I worked in the film business because I had a real big passion in the film business. So I worked my way up in production from production assistant to producing commercials and music videos. Um, and that's when I had my first stomach ache which um, led me to starting my first business, which was, which was a gluten-free farm-to-table pizza concept in New York City without any experience. Um, then um, I, I ran that for seven years, found a great partner after hitting, you know, having a lot of problems with different partners. Uh, I found a really great partner to run the restaurants, which freed up my time to work on my newest project, which is called Thinks. Um, and Thinks was, again, born of necessity because necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. And, um, it was born because, you know, as a woman, every month I would have a monthly accident because of my period. Um, and I'd be very busy running from one restaurant to another and kept having, you know, to run home and change because I, you know, overflowed in my, my tampon and had an accident in my underwear. And it was just a, a giant pain, a pain point and realized that it wasn't just me, but in fact, you know, 80% of, the, of, of, of all women in this country have expressed anxiety and issues when they have their periods. Um, in fact, I'm sure it's 100%, but 80% have admitted to that. Um, and, um, and so took it upon myself, um, brought in my partner, Antonia, and my sister, Rada, and produced and created this, this new pair of underwear that's leak and stain resistant, that's absorbent, antimicrobial, moisture wicking, and supports women every day of the month. And yet it looks and feels just like a regular pair of underwear. So, um, so that was, that's our first innovation. We launched it this past year and saw some really great traction, got, you know, press in over 65 publications, um, all organically and we're growing in 2015. We have a lot of, um, exciting things happening this year for thinks. And so the website for that is she thinks with an X.com. Wow. That is a wild story. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, it, and I hate to just because there's so much we could talk about about that personal story, totally. but because this is <laughs> based yeah. on the book, let's jump right in. And Absolutely. so, uh, do cool S H star T, which <laughs> was uh, made available not too long ago, actually just about a year and a half, August 6, 2013. And Mickey, we're going to move quickly, but we're here to cover the top questions that our, our listener slash future reader would like to get answered. And the first one is what was the inspiration behind writing this book? Yeah. So um, when you when you're in college or even graduating from college, entrepreneurship is really not something that you really study, or at least back then you didn't study at all, and there wasn't an entrepreneurship course. And so you know what I began to do was start to read books, and I would read these incredible autobiographies by the likes of Richard Branson or Tony Shea. Um, and you know I would read, read reading Richard's book, and um, and I would be so inspired when I'm done. But then I'm just like, but wait, what did you say in your first meeting to get your first million dollars to raise your first $25,000, forget the million dollars. What did you say in your first meeting to get press for the first time when you didn't know anybody? Like what are, you know, how did you, you know, build a tribe of people to support and inspire you? You know, what did you do in all those great, cause I was so inspired, but didn't have the granular steps to go from step zero to step one in business and life. And then the other thing was, or I read these business books and these business books are so, you know, jam packed with, you know, with, with methodology. But after page three, my eyes are crossed and I just couldn't, 
you know, couldn't read another page. And so the idea was like, can you marry great storytelling with granular takeaways? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so the book was born out of necessity. Again, I wanted to find a book that I could read that was current, that was really easy to read, that gave me the step-by-step, you know, system and go to steps, go to, to go from step zero to step one in business and life. So you already covered this a little bit, but maybe you can even go a little bit deeper. And that is what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Yeah, um, it's it's just that it's it's either very inspirational or very dense business book, and there really wasn't you know a place or a book that was that was very fast moving. If you look at you know why people love the Born Identity movies is because scene one is they drop you in the scene and in a car chase scene, and you're just like, oh my god, I have to find out what happens in the end. And so each chapter drops you in on a different scene. Like I'm about to rate, you know, get my first check written for $25,000. You know, will I get that or not? You know, I'm about to sneak into the New York Times building to try to get, you know, Florence Fabricant of the New York Times to, to write an article about my first restaurant. Um, will I sneak in and, and be able to get reach her? You know, what, you know, it drops me in the scene of going to being at Burning Man and, you know, finding love for the first time. Like, what does that look like? Like, you know, what happens? Like, does she actually get to make that happen? So it's really just like, you really want to, you know, finish each each chapter. So by the time, you know, all of my readers who've read it have said that they finished the book in one day or two days flat, which is so unusual for a business book. Hmm. And so I think I already know the answer based on what you just said, but how do you suggest the reader engage with your book? Is this one that they should absolutely read from front to back or can they jump in and out cherry picking information as needed? I mean, I think, I think, you know, great story or, you know, storytelling is storytelling and you want to, you know, you, if you capture the, the reader after first, the first chapter, then they're going to want to you know, finish it through. Can you go in and read the chapter on raising money? Absolutely. Can you go and read the chapter on getting press? Absolutely. Can you go and read the chapter about building your tribe and your community? 100%. So, I mean, there, you can go in and out because each story are, are very much unique in their own, but it does, for, it does, it does have a story arc to it, which, which a reader generally likes to read the whole story. It's very easy read. Absolutely. So Mickey, now that we know a little bit of the background or the purpose behind the book, uh, this is my favorite part. This is where I want to really hand over the mic to you for the next you know, five to eight minutes and allow you to, to give the reader or the future reader a great idea of what they can expect to get out of your book. So will you do that for us? Absolutely. Um, so in my chapter on fundraising, um, when you know I was 24 years old, first starting out and thinking about fundraising for the first time, it's something that's the most daunting thing for a first-time entrepreneur. And, you know, I first started by going and doing these one-on-one interviews with um, these potential investors. I put, the, put them in quotes. Um, and, um, you know, sitting across, across from these investors, I would get really, uh, you know, really nervous. And I wouldn't be myself. And I would be just like, this was my business idea. And this is why I think you'll make a lot of money. And it just wasn't authentic. It wasn't real. It wasn't me. And so for six months, I just spent, you know, meeting after meeting, sitting in front of different people in my investment banking suit, very uncomfortable and just, you know, raise zero dollars, you know, raise a fat donut <laughs> um, after six months. And so I basically sat back and I said, okay, what am I doing wrong? Like what, what, you know, where, where am I going wrong here? And that's when I realized again, that I wasn't authentic. I wasn't me. And, and that was very, very clear. If you can't be confident in a meeting, then why would they invest in you? You know, so I asked myself, like, you know, when am I most me? And, you know, when you're like, when you're so excited about an idea and then you whisper it into your friend's ear, and you're like, oh, my God, I had this amazing idea. Like, guess what it is? Like, oh, my God. And you get so pumped about it. But then all of a sudden, when you're sitting in front of an investor, all that excitement, that energy, that like, you know, that, that you know, um, that, that uh, confidence goes away. And so where do you, where can you put yourself, you know, with investors where your confidence can remain? And so I thought about for myself, I'm like, when did I ever get people, you know, like when I was in college, I would have boys, different boys come watch me play soccer because that's where I said I shined. And so, um, so, and then afterwards the boys would like me more because they saw me in a place where I shined. And I said, okay, well, where else can I shine? And I said, oh my God, holding dinner parties. So I started hosting these in quotes, fundraising dinner parties where I would invite anyone I knew with an extra change in their pockets, people from investment banking days, from being out in New York days, just like going and meeting everyone I can days, and, you know, call, called upon people. And the way I, inter- I, I invited them was, was, you know, was when I realized like, the power of what's mutually beneficial, like being MB, mutually beneficial. So I said, okay, like what will get these interesting people to come to my fundraising dinner party? 
Well, the first thing is free food. <laughs> free food's a huge seller. It gets people really excited about coming to anything, you know, um, you know, saying, hey, like, you know, I've handpicked you. You've been handpicked to come to this meeting of the minds and this, this dinner with, a, you know, lots of different interesting people that you've never met before. You're going to come and have a beautiful free meal in a beautiful New York City a- apartment. Um, and, and you'll get to, you'll get to, you know, have like a, a lovely evening that's free. And so, and meet really interesting people. So, you know, everyone I sent these invitations to said, yes, they all came. They all wanted to come because I gave them an opportunity to come do something that's unique. That gave them something for free. That gave them a beautiful experience and, and a chance to meet new people. So they all came. And when I, I had everyone there, um, I made sure to bring on a chef to prepare the food. So I wasn't running around making the food myself. Um, so I had, you know, now you can actually go to kitchen.com or kitchensurfing.com and bring a chef on and say, I'm going to pay 20 bucks, you know, per, per person. And a chef would come prepare the whole meal, clean the whole thing up. And it's, and you don't have to worry about that. Um, so, so I had a chef prepare a, a whole meal. Um, and, uh, and then, um, when I had the dinner party, I made sure that everyone shared a piece of themselves because everybody wants to be heard. Um, and then I, when, when, when it was time to actually present the business idea, I didn't present it myself because I was too nervous. I realized that I'm not confident when, in that time when I was 24 to actually like pitch a business idea to a room full of potential investors. So I had my friend who had a heavy British accent to present my idea for me so that he sounded very British and very smart. And so, you know, from those dinner parties is when I raised money. I raised $250,000 for my first restaurant business when I had never opened a restaurant in my life, never opened a business in my life. But I realized I was able to find a place where I shine, which was hosting dinner parties, made sure that the events went out without without a hitch, made sure everyone became friends with each other. And people want to be part of this community. And so everybody invested. So that's sort of a, a, you know, one of the stories that, um, that I told in the book that really shared, like, you know, how you know, how to raise money on, you know, in a very unorthodox way. And what actually happened before I forget was the fact that, um, what I didn't realize happened happened was that it created positive peer pressure. So, so when, when I, when people were having such a good time at this event, one person would whisper in the other person's ear, are you investing? And they're like, yeah, I think I am. Oh, are you investing? Yeah. So all of a sudden, like everybody invested because there was like this positive peer pressure that happened because everyone had such a great time at this event. So that's sort of a little, a little a sort of a tidbit story on fundraising that everybody and anybody can host a dinner party. And in the book, I really go in depth on exactly what I cooked, what I prepared, um, you know, what was the invitation email I sent out to people to get them excited to come, you know, um, just every single bit of the detail of, of hosting these dinner parties to help me raise the first $250,000. That's excellent. So many books, you, you said this in the beginning, kind of when you were differentiating your book and that's that sometimes the first steps aren't in, uh, some of these books talk about the big picture. And like you said, well, how'd you, how'd you get the first thousand? How'd you get on the phone with the first person right. to invest? And so the fact that you even broke down the meal and, and all that kind right. of stuff is, is fantastic. And so even the, even that one story that you just went through, there's so much different context and, and content within that one story. And I know that there's much more in the book. So the right. next question I feel like somewhat difficult. And that's if the reader can only take away one concept principle or action item out of your entire book, what would you want that to be? Um, it would be to put your running shoes on and walk out that door. <laughs> 90% of people, you know, to hit the gym, to lose weight, for example, is to put your running shoes on and walk out that door. The minute you walk out that door and put one foot in front of the other, things will start to fall into place. You'll start to see the weight loss, even if it takes, a, you know, a month or two at first before your metabolism can kick in for it to like, you know, or, or just jumpstart itself again. Just put your running shoes on and walk out that door. It's the same concept in business. Just put your running shoes on and walk out the door. Take those first steps. Like, don't stop until, you know, you get the answers that you want. You know, I went six months without ra- with raising money and, and having, you know, zero luck. And then before I changed my tactic. Um, but again, like, if there is a will, there is a way. It's so, you know, I guess cheesy to say. But truly, truly, it's one of the most, um, you know, one of the most important things is is to is to just act, you know, just do it. And, and starting sort of, I guess, I guess the way to do that for me, like step one is to, um, is, is, is the concept of you are as, as good and the average of the five closest friends you keep. Mm. And 
That means that if you're spending time with people who are wanting to go watch football on weekends and just get drunk and just talk shit about others, then that's not, you know, that's just who you're going to end up being. If you end up with, you know, friends who are, you know, super like, you know, deadbeats who want to smoke pot all night and just like do nothing, watch TV, then that's, you know, again, I guess that's, that's the average of who you're going to be. So go and seek out people who are taking action, who are actually doing things, who are inspired, who have the light turned on in their eyes, and then you will become the average of them. So truly just eliminate the negative relationships to, you know, to make room and create for, create room for inspiring relationships. Um, and then as soon as you do that, you'll be able to see so many great results as well. So I've pulled out a couple different quotes from this interview so far, and that actually is, is our next question. Do you have a favorite quote from your book? Um, I, well, my favorite quote in general is, is iteration is perfection, um, which basically means that, you know, you can put out, you know, a, you know, as good of a product as you, as you can into the world and just iterate, just like get better, like get feedback from your customers, get feedback from people, make adjustments to your business and then get, make it and put it out again in, in a better way, get the feedback you know, make your changes and put it out in the world. Like that's iteration. So like iteration is perfection. As soon as you stay stagnant and think that what you've done is, is done, Mm. then, then you're going to lose. You have to just keep moving. Um, and, and, and just put something out in the world, you know, a minimal viable product, like something that looks as good as you can, but not to a point where you're like, you know, your perfectionist nature is like psyching you out from doing it. Just put something in the world and keep iterating. Iteration is perfection. Perfect. So Mickey, are you, are you a pretty avid reader? I am. I read a lot. Um, you know, I let a lot more before I started my businesses, but, um, I've started to read some again, um, just mainly like really good websites and articles and things like that. Like the, you know, the website brain pickings, um, it's a really great website. I don't know if you've you've heard of it. Yes. Um, yeah. Brain picking pickings is cool. Um, and then, you know, I've, you know, I read, I read just a lot of nonfiction really. Mickey, can you recommend and It can be, it can be fiction or nonfiction, but can you give us a recommendation of a book that really was a, a lifestyle or paradigm shifting book for you? One that really impacted your life? Um, absolutely. I would say, you know, one of the first books that really got my imagination to flow is the book of Jitterbug Perfume by Tom Robbins. I don't know if you've heard of Tom Robbins, no. but um, he is, you know, one of the most incredible fiction writers I've, I've ever read in my life. He just depicts these great, you know, just paints these incredible pictures. And um, it, it just goes to show that, you know, the alphabet, how many letters, 26 letters in the alphabet, you know, and you can just, you know, move those and change those around to create some of the most poetic words in the world, um, but also give you a great sense of adventure. I think he, you know, really helped instill a great sense of adventure. Um, you know, in addition to obviously my parents and, and the book losing my virginity by Richard Branson is also amazing. One of my favorite books and one of the first books that really helped me become an entrepreneur, um, losing my virginity by Richard Branson is also another great book. Excellent. Well, that's a, that's the first time we've actually had the, you said jitterbug perfume. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the first time we've ever had that one yeah. reference. So what I'm, about I'm, anyone talking about losing my virginity? Uh, I think we have. So, so we're on okay. the, probably episode uh, roughly about one forty four, one forty two, one forty or oh, well, four three, four okay. four. And I think we've gotten that one maybe once or twice so far. Once here recently. Um, however, I know for a fact we have not had the, the jitterbug perfume. I would have remembered <laughs> that. So, yeah. so awesome. Well, Mickey, before we depart. Can you recommend the best way for our listeners to not only get more information on you, but to get additional information on your book as well? Um, where they can get additional information about my book? Uh, about you and your book. If they, if they yeah. wanted to find out more about you and your book, what, totally. what's the best spot for them to check out? Absolutely. So so for me, they can go to mickeyagrawal.com, M-I-K-I-A-G-R-A-W-A-L.com, um, or they can go to docoolshit.org. And we actually launched our, our Do Cool Shit Bootcamp um, for young entrepreneurs, um, that, that launched a month ago and we had 20 doers that came from all around the world and had a life changing experience, um, taught them everything about, you know, digital strategy to pitching your business idea to, um, to business law, to, um, to branding and, you know, branding and design to, you know, building a website, just every single thing that encompasses building a, starting a business from zero to one, this bootcamp will take people through. It's a week long bootcamp and it was extremely, you know, successful. It was really great. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that. Cause I'll also put that in our show notes so that people can go back yeah. and reference that because a lot of people are mobile 
running. A lot of people put on their running shoes and they walked out the door. So they, they yeah. won't be able to visit that right now, but they will when they get back. So that's fantastic. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your, you know, we call it a baby sometimes because we know how much effort goes into writing a book. Well, yeah. Thank you for coming on and sharing your baby or your book with us. Thank you. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like to get more information on Mickey or her book, Do Cool, S-H star T, check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. And if you want an opportunity to win this book, become a VIP. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.